So a few weeks back, this video here popped up onto my YouTube home feed. I'm not quite sure how I've only just seen this considering that my YouTube algorithm should be set up for shark-based content, but the video came out eight months ago now and has got about 3 million views. How have I not seen it? Anyway, it's from the YBS Youngbloods YouTube channel featuring social media influencer and Aussie adventurer Brody Moss. We have featured some of Brody's stunts on the channel before, but seeing this white shark kayak one, I knew I had to react to it because it is literally insane. Just quickly before we start though, I don't want to condone some of the things that Brody does in his videos because a lot of them are downright stupid. In all seriousness though, in some cases, it's not a particularly great example to be setting for people, especially kids who might be watching his channel. Because kids and even adults sometimes can struggle separating what they're seeing on screen with how they should behave in real life, especially when it comes to dangerous wild animals. But I guess that's just content creation these days. Who can do the most crazy dangerous thing, avoid death and and then just slap it on social media. It's what people like to watch, and his channel is a clear example of that. With 8 million subscribers and over 3 billion views, there's a lot of people out there enjoying that content. But today's video isn't a commentary on ocean social media influencers. You guys know what my thoughts are on that. We're just gonna react to this wild transparent kayak video and maybe have a look to see if we can spot some cool shark behaviors along the way. Right, let's check it out then. To be fair, it looks like a cracking day for a kayak. Look how calm that water is, it's breathtaking. So for the majority of the video, he He's seeing various different things like sea snakes, ironically probably way more likely to kill him than the white shark that we see later in the video. I think that one looks like it could be an olive sea snake, which aren't particularly aggressive ones to be fair. But then he spots a turtle and a few humpback whales as well, and the shots that he's got here are epic. Now he's probably headed out here off Western Australia during the humpback whale migration season where those whales are going to be giving birth in the warmer waters just off the coast of Australia. The thing is though, those humpback whales that are giving birth are also going to draw in some larger predators, white sharks. Oh yes, okay, this is a really cool interspecies interaction here between one of the adult humpbacks and this particular white shark. It's tough to say for sure, but I'd say the shark is probably somewhere around three and a half meters, maybe pushing four meters. But if we play it along a little bit here, look at what this humpback whale does. Bang, that's a definite back the hell up movement there. And the white shark just wasn't happy about how close that humpback was to it. The whale there clearly is not happy about that white shark being close to its calves and it's just getting nice up close and personal with it to get it to back off. It's just so interesting to see how these two animals interact with each other though. They've got this predator prey dynamic where the white sharks will feed on humpback whales when they've died or maybe feed on the calves. But also there's this massive size difference between the two of them as well. It's kind of reminding me of that insane video where the white shark took down that adult humpback whale and it was biting its tail and its sides. That was grim. Check out the video we did on that, by the way, by clicking that link in the top right there. Seeing this humpback go on the defensive here with the shark, though, is really cool. But I think what's even cooler is if we zoom into the shark here and have a look at it closely, you can see those pet fins drop down into an agonistic threat display as well. They're nice and horizontal here as it's just cruising through the water, but then as soon as it spots the whale and it banks around to the side, those fins drop right down. And that's just the white shark saying to the humpback, right now, I am not happy with you being this close to me either. There's such subtle signals being conveyed between those two species. Awesome. I think with all that drone footage, you kind of forget that Brody is probably, what, 30 meters away here in his transparent kayak? And sure enough, he decides to paddle over towards that shark. So it's this shot here then that gives us the best look at the size of the shark, which if you reckon that kayak is what, maybe just over three meters, that shark there is at least the size of the kayak, probably a little bit bigger. So I think the estimate of somewhere between three and a half and four meters is about right. And at that size, this is now likely a mature adult white shark, maybe around 25 to 30 years old. And its diet has probably just shifted from fish to marine mammals, which is why it's likely hanging around those humpback whales. Definitely a male as well, because you've just got the faintest hint of a clasper poking out there past that pelvic fin. So yeah, knowing it's a male white shark and looking at that size of between three and a half to four meters maybe, this is definitely an adult male. I was just thinking here for a second though, who is flying that drone? Because he clearly isn't because he's got a paddle in his hands and then that camera in his mouth. I've never really flown drones, so I don't know what they're capable of, but I'm thinking it's maybe got some kind of tracking thing on it where it can just fly and track you at the same time maybe. Has he got something on the back of the kayak there just below that wide angle camera or maybe something in his pocket that's got a signal between between him and the drone? I don't know. Any drone flyers out there, please do let me know what's going on here in the comments. Just got my paddle ready in case I just need to give it a little friendly. Come on, mate, too close. 
Yeah, actually, do you know what? It's fairly sound advice there. Sometimes if a shot like this is just getting a little bit too close, something like a quick jab with the paddle could be enough to spook it and just deter it. Sharks don't really like getting poked and prodded with things. You'll have seen before shark scientists trying to tag sharks with a pole spear from the side of the boat, and after they've been tagged, they just freak and swim off. So it's quite handy to have that kayak paddle there, just ready to give it a poke if you need to. Oh man, I don't know how I'd be feeling if this thing was like six meters. Three, four meters I'm fine with. Six plus. Yeah, fair enough. When you're talking about those big mature females who are starting to push towards that upper end of five meters, that is a big shark. And the bigger they are, the bolder they are as well. So a big old female could easily flip that kayak with a tiny swish of the tail. The whole situation here though is reminding me of that Shark Week show with Jimmy Partington, I think it was, where the shark just completely obliterated the Perspex box that he was snorkeling in. That shark I'm pretty sure was pushing five meters or so, but it just completely decimated the box that he was in. Although it was a slightly different set of circumstances to what we're seeing here. In that case, Jimmy was in a box next to a whale carcass. And in my opinion, that shark was acting territorial around the carcass and decided to give him a warning bite to tell him to back off. This shark here that's circling Brody though doesn't really have anything to be territorial over. Those humpbacks that they were with earlier are long gone. I guess sometimes they can be a bit territorial over their personal space, but at this point here, I'd say it's showing more signs of curiosity than anything else. That's not to say that it wouldn't try and nudge that kayak though. So Christ, please do not do this at home, guys. I just want to make that really, really clear. You can see though, as the interaction between the shark and that kayak goes on, the shark in question is just getting more and more confident. I think sometimes people just envisage a big white shark like this to have the confidence to just be immediately next to the kayak, maybe nudging it from the get-go, but they're not like that. The vast majority of white sharks are actually pretty cautious predators and they'll take a decent amount of time to scope something out before edging closer and closer with each pass. And it's because it pays to be cautious with new or novel things in your environment. Because for the shark here, it's likely never been in a situation quite like this before. It doesn't know whether that kayak is gonna lash out in defense and the longer the interaction goes on and that doesn't happen, the more confident that shark gets. Oh <laughs> Whoa, hold on, I gotta pause that there. Check out the pectoral fins there. That shark is not happy at all. Just keeping it paused here for a second, look at the pec fin depression. Those fins are so pointed downwards in an agonistic display. Thinking back, actually, I'm pretty sure the pec fins were like that earlier on in the video when we were having a look at those claspers, but I was too distracted looking at the claspers to notice the pec fin depression. <laughs> Bit of a weird thing to say. But yeah, anyway, we can see that when the shark is up close to that kayak, those pec fins are down and it's not happy at all. And it's just telling Brody and the kayak, it's not enjoying them being in its personal space, just like it was telling the humpback whale earlier. We can actually directly compare the fins that we're seeing there with this shot here, where you can really clearly see those pectoral fins are nice and horizontal out wide in that cruising position. It's actually a great comparison there for you guys to just look at a shark that's calm and not bothered at all, to then a shark that's irritated or feels threatened by your presence. The problem is here though is that Brody isn't seeing that. He's not got his head under the water and it's just so tough to accurately see shark body signals when you're looking at them from the surface. It's the most rowdy behind me. It always comes in behind me. Or the other thing that I've noticed, it comes in where the sun is. Yeah, this is a great demonstration here of that stealthiness for sharks as well. Brody just said there that he thinks that that shark is rowdiest when it's behind him. And it's true, sharks will approach novel objects in their environment from behind. It's part of that stealthiness and not being seen by a potential prey source. He also mentioned there about the shark always seeming to come in from the direction that the sun is facing, which is absolutely correct as well. Charlie Hoveneers, who's a shark scientist in Australia, I'm pretty sure did a study on this. And he found that in the morning when the sun was rising, the sharks were more likely to approach from the east and then in the evening when the sun was setting, they were more likely to approach from the west. For those of you that know your east and your west, you'll see that the sharks approach from the direction of the sun there. I think if I remember correctly as well, when it was cloudy, they couldn't find any directional link, which does point to the sharks using the sun's position on purpose. So it's entirely possible that they're using the sun and the glare that's reflecting off the surface of the water to basically camouflage themselves from any potential prey items that they want to investigate. It also might be that that potential prey item is just illuminated better from that angle, but in 
reality, I'd say it's probably both of those things. Think back to an occasion where you've had the sun in your eyes or you're looking at water and that sun's glare is just reflecting off the surface. Your pupils are gonna contract and you're gonna squint your eyes because it's just too bright. And importantly, that means you're way more likely to miss something that's happening in the peripheries of your vision. It's an insanely intelligent hunting strategy for these animals and they absolutely do it on purpose. I think it's pretty cool that it's being shown to us here in this video. So for Brody here, the shark is now showing signs of irritation and it's displaying behaviors that could potentially be linked to stalking slash hunting. <laughs> <laughs> now is not the time to be in a transparent kayak in the middle of the ocean next to a white shark. Well, I didn't think about this problem, but I'm trying to leave and he's following me. Yep, there's your issue, Brody. This is not a situation that anybody wants to find themselves in. It turns out we actually don't get a conclusion for how the story ends though, because we just get this little odd cartoon montage of Brody bashing the shark with a kayak paddle. But seeing that he eventually posted a few other videos after this one, we know that he did manage to get back to shore unscathed fortunately. Although looking at that latest video there, it does seem that he's disappeared from social media. That's YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok gone. Nothing in the last five months. Now, I haven't read anything about him going missing from Australia, and he has been known to take these long breaks from posting, but considering his line of work and some of the stunts that he pulls, your mind does begin to wonder. Obviously, I'd never wish ill of him, even if I do think some of the things that he does are pretty stupid. <laughs> wild animals are wild animals, guys, and if you put yourselves in potentially dangerous situations with them, well, the risks are plain and obvious. Guys, if you enjoyed this little reaction video and you felt like you learned something about shark behavior, then please do give it a like. But before you all dash off, earlier in the video, I mentioned to you about a white shark that took down an adult humpback whale, and you can learn all about it in this video right here. Honestly, some of the footage of that is crazy, and it just gives you a real perspective of what some of these big white sharks can do. So make sure you check it out here.